Okay, so we're just going to take a quick, uh, a quick look into use cases, um, and what they are is very simply a description of how a system is expected to perform when interacting with a user or another system. And in, in specific, what we're trying to get at here is a description of our system that will allow us to identify any functional requirements, any actors, and any interactions the system must, must have. So here's an example use case diagram. This is what um, a diagrammatic version might look like. What we can see on the left hand side is a customer and a passenger. These are examples of actors. So these are uh, people that might use the system. On the right hand side, we can see a payment authentication system. This is also an actor, not a human actor, but it's another system that our system must interact with. Uh, and in the center, we can see a whole bunch of ovals, uh, like browse, book flight, log on, amend reservation, select meal, and so on. These are our individual use cases. So these are what these individual actors would use the system for. Now, this is a very high level, simple description of what's going on at this case. And so let me just be clear what we're trying to achieve. And the best way to do this is, is by using an example. So let's say you've been contracted to design a new ATM system for Vic Banks, um, and you're going to be asked to, you, you've been asked to build the system. Uh, and that system must be able to handle multiple types of transactions. So let's say you've got that description and you're told, right, go ahead, build it. Well, where do you start, really? You, you don't have a lot of information. Is it for staff? Is it for students? Um, what kind of things will it may need, need to do? Uh, who will it lock out? Who will it have in? What other systems does it need to interact with? There's a whole lot more questions that we need answers to before we actually start writing code or connecting wires. And so we need to ask those questions and get answers to them um, before we can actually start programming anything. And that is the point of a use case, is to go from these general English language descriptions of systems to something we can physically make. So the steps we're going to go through are analyzing what is meant, then designing, implement, and testing. And hopefully that's familiar because it is the engineering design cycle. So we start out by doing some analysis, some research on our system to try and understand the problem and in specifically to get a set of functional requirements. This is only what a system does, not how it does them, just what it needs to do in order to meet the needs of its actors and its connections. Once we've done that, we go, um, we can refine those those questions. You can see some example questions on the slide there that might help identify those functional requirements more clearly. Once we've done that, um, we come up with some solution, and this is where we, we find out our systemic requirements. This is the how of our system, how it will operate. Will it use Java? Will it be a web interface? Is it going to be a mobile app? Will it be a physical robot? This is the level where we start answering those questions. But the most important thing about all of this is that it is user-oriented. Um, all of this is trying to identify who are the users and what do they need to do. Rather than coming at it from an engineering perspective, which might be this is what I can build, this is what I can offer you, this is an approach which asks what does the user need. And this is why use cases are so valuable because they allow us as technical experts to talk to non-technical people and to come to some understanding um, before we actually start writing code. So there's some practice questions and I encourage you to go and watch John Oliver.